organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Iowa City is looking to go green. The only solution may be from a granny. We'll tell you how. Coming up, I'll tell you why the term farmer's market might be a little misleading here in Iowa City. And in sports, we have everything black and gold in this week's edition of Pregame. That's all coming your way next. Daily Iowa TV starts now. I'm Tom Brokaw. For more than 100 years now, the University of Iowa community has been waking up to the Daily Iowa. Today, it's the largest newsroom in eastern Iowa. And now you can see the news every night on Daily Iowan TV and get it anytime worldwide at dailyiowan.com. Good evening and welcome to your Thursday edition of Daily Iowan TV. I'm Reed Chandler. And I'm Muriel Kone. To some registered voters, the election is over. They've casted their vote and are ready to see the results. Early voting started this morning at locations across the county, including the Iowa City Public Library and Johnson County Auditor Offices. Iowa is the first swing state to head to the polls and is one of more than 30 states to allow early voting. Voters started lining up early this morning and will continue to wait in line until the polls close at 10 p.m. Polls will reopen tomorrow and will continue until the November elections. And Iowa's kickoff to early voting made national news. CNN reporter John King made a stop in Iowa City today with his political coverage tour. We got a chance to sit down with King and see where he addressed the importance of young people voting early. In the early voting, the Democrats always make a bigger push, especially in this state. They always make a bigger push than the Republicans, but they're making an even bigger push with a focus on the younger voters because now they have the time. Remember, the president didn't have a primary challenge, so they're able to spend their money building voting lists, building contacts, getting your cell phone number, getting your email. To hear the whole unedited version of John King's interview, go to Daily Iowan's website at www.dailyiowan.com. Republican candidate for Iowa's 2nd Congressional District visited a University of Iowa journalism class Thursday. John Archer talked to the class about the effect of social media in today's political campaigns. Reporters from the DI also had a chance to sit down with Archer. Tune in to the Sunday's edition to hear Archer's interview along with comments from Democratic Representative David Lopesack. And aside from the political news, this year's University of Iowa homecoming marks 100 years of black and gold homecoming tradition. UI students showed their spirit tonight at the rec center during the Iowa Shout event by dancing, shouting, and acting. The parade and pep rally kicked off Friday in downtown at 5.45 p.m. The parade route travels down Washington and Clinton Streets, Iowa Avenue, and Dubuque Street. The events will be followed by a coronation and a free concert headlined by Matt and Kim and Grand Funk Railroad. And now let's check in with Alyssa Bergamini for a look at the weekend weather. Alyssa? Thanks, Muriel. Well, today was a beautiful day here in Iowa City. The sun was out and students took advantage of the nice weather. The good news is tomorrow looks just as promising. Iowa City will start out the morning with some sun reaching around 65 degrees. Then the afternoon will heat up with a high of 71. And the evening will end with clear skies with highs in the 60s and lows in the 50s. So not too chilly yet. Now let's look at the forecast for the next couple of days. We will kick off Saturday's homecoming game with a warm day of 81 degrees. But the following day on Sunday will dip down back into the 70s. We will start Monday off with a high of 80 degrees, but we're going to see a 10% chance of rain. And finally, sunny skies will be in full effect come Tuesday and Wednesday. Although the fall season has arrived, there are high temps and keeping the summer weather alive. That's all for weather. Back to you. Thanks for that, Alyssa. Now, a group of grannies came to the Johnson County Board of Supervisors meeting this morning with an intent of going green. The 100 Grannies group is pushing to ban plastic bags in Johnson County. Their goal is to help reduce the waste at landfills, and although Johnson County officials said they admire their work, they said they should instead focus their project on a bigger problem, cardboard in landfills. The Iowa City Recycling Coordinator, Jennifer Jordan, said 0.3% of landfills waste comes from plastic bags, and 10.1% of waste comes from cardboard. Jordan says she doesn't think a ban is the best way to make the social change. Education is. Education is. 
Iowa City's local farmer mar farmer's market is receiving national attention. An online survey ranked the market as the best in the state and 17 best in the nation. DITV's Nicole Megan investigates how students can profit from the market's widespread popularity. Farmers aren't the only people who can make a profit at the Iowa City Farmer's Market. Students can also cash in on the market's sweet success. The majority of students go to the Chauncey Swan parking ramp on Wednesdays and Saturdays to shop, not to sell. Market Master Dan Daly says the farmer's market is a great way to gain real world experience and some extra cash. There's a lot the student could learn, uh, anything from, from economics to uh, agriculture and uh, uh, the sciences of raising food and, uh, and a lot of wonderful opportunities just to interact with people. Cassidy Bell, a recent UI graduate, says that one reason that there may not be a lot of student vendors is because many of them go home for the summer, the farmer's market's prime season. So if they're staying over the summer, it'd be a great job. Um, it's a great way to get involved in the community outside of the university and for them to meet more people. As the night continued, I did find one student vendor, and he has already put his work from the farmer's market on his resume. So uh, and it, it's also convenient because I'm in this college of business, so it allows me to kind of utilize the, the tools that I've been gaining throughout the last four years of college here. But the question is, why aren't there more student vendors in the Iowa City Farmers Market? Um, can you Sean did come up with one potential reason. Well, it cuts into Iowa football. This is Nicole Meehan, Daily Iowan TV. The last Iowa City Farmers Market for the year will be on Halloween. Coming off losses in two of their last three games, the University of Iowa football team looks to bounce back this homecoming weekend at Kinnick Stadium. Daily Iowa TV's Josh Bolander and Lauren Moss are here to get you ready for Daily Iowa TV sports pregame. Hello and welcome to Daily Iowa TV sports homecoming edition of pregame. That's right, Josh. The battle between the Gophers and Hawks will mark the 100th homecoming on the UI campus. And our pregame staff has been working tirelessly to ensure you have everything you need to know about the Black and Gold's contest against Minnesota. We'll have it all for you today, including insider reporting, perspective from those close to the team, and an interview with Hawkeye senior quarterback James Vandenberg. And this week we'll be taking a break from our two-minute drill to talk about the importance of a pig. And all that and more to come, but we have to start off with a preview of Saturday's contest. From Daily Iron TV Sports football reporter Nick Rector. Nick? Big Ten Conference play starts this week as the Hawkeyes welcome the Minnesota Golden Gophers into Canuck Stadium on Saturday. Both teams will be looking to start off conference play with a win, but with Minnesota sitting at 4 0, they are definitely the favored team in this matchup. All you have to do is watch them play on film. They're really playing well. They're playing with confidence. They're playing fast. And part of that second year in the system, I think. But they're, they've done a great job up there. The coaching staff's done a great job. And uh, most importantly, the players are really playing well. The 2-2 two and two Hawkeyes will be coming out with a chip on their shoulder, though, looking to redeem themselves after a tough 22-21 loss to the Golden Gophers last year in Minneapolis. Coming off another three-touchdown game, Iowa sophomore running back Phenom Mark Wiseman is the player to watch in this matchup. Wiseman has six rushing touchdowns so far this season. That's second in the Big Ten. While Wiseman has impressed over the past two weeks, senior signal caller James Vandenberg has continued to struggle, leading to criticism from the media. However, head coach Kirk Ferentz has stood by his man. You know, to just look at the quarterback, which I understand is what everybody does in offensive analysis, uh, you know, it's, it's not quite as simple as that. Uh, I'll, I'll just say this. I'm glad he's our quarterback, and, you know, I'm glad he's going to be our quarterback the next eight games. You know, so it's, uh, I think he's a heck of a player, and I think he's a heck of a young man. And as always, the Iowa-Minnesota football rivalry will continue this weekend with the Florida Rosedale Trophy on the line. So on Saturday, while most teams are battling it out for a win, Iowa and Minnesota will be battling it out for pork. Nick Rector, Daily Iowa TV Sports. Lauren Nick, of course, mentioned the importance of James Vandenberg's play this weekend. The Keokuk Iowa native has only thrown for one touchdown pass on the year and has faced criticism after compiling a 10-9 record as a starter for the black and gold. Our 
own player insider Annie Constable caught up with the senior signal caller to discuss exactly that. Standing alongside James Vandenberg, James, can you talk about the game this past Saturday? I know a lot of people are talking about what the fans were saying, but in the presser just now, your coach said how much confidence he has in you. How important is that to hear? Well, yeah, I, I think it's one of those things where, in general, playing quarterback, you got to roll with the punches, and you know after a loss, uh, everything's going to be scrutinized, and that usually starts with you. So. Uh, I have to do whatever's in my power to make sure that uh, I get better this week and, and do my job and that the offense moves forward as a whole. And after that game, there was a lot of positives from the offense. A lot of the receivers were clicking. You guys looked good out there in the beginning. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I thought we, we, we had a pretty decent day on offense. Um, but in the end, we needed to score 33 points instead of 31. But uh, that's two weeks in a row where we've been pretty balanced. And uh, we need to continue that trend going forward. And can you talk about the Minnesota defense? Coach Ferentz just mentioned how fast they are and how dangerous they are. Um, can you t touch on that a little bit? Yeah, I think it, it starts with their personnel, and they got 11 guys that are extremely athletic up front. Their guys can run well, and in the back they run well. and uh, They do some things to get out to the quarterback and, and have some guys that can, can cover your receivers downfield, so it's going to be a big challenge for us. Okay, well, for James Vandenberg, I'm Annie Costable. Back to you guys in the studio. And one of the reporters who will be in the press box to watch Vandenberg lead the Hawks will be Daily Iowan Sports editor Molly Olmstead. Daily Iowan TV Sports Ian Martin has the interview from the newsroom. Ian? Thanks, I'm Ian Martin alongside Daily Iowan Sports editor Molly Irene Olmstead. And Molly, going into this weekend's game against Minnesota, the Gophers quarterback Marquise Gray is out. Perhaps some opportunities for Iowa's defense, which got really torn apart by Gray last season. Right. Um, Gray's ankle is still not healthy enough to return to the field, and that is a really good thing for the Hawkeyes because he was just too big and too strong and too fast for the Hawkeyes last season. He just tore through everyone. Um, this season, the or this game, the backup quarterback, Max Chartel, is more of a passer, and that can be really redemptive for the Iowa defensive line um, as they work on their pass defense. Um, the Iowa defensive line, for the first three games of the season, played well in the first half but then came out in the second half and played just phenomenal. But against Central Michigan last week, the defensive line um, didn't really come out in the second half with the strength that they have for the first few games of the season. Um, they had you know, some trouble with speed. They just had some trouble executing, and they ran into some trouble with some personal fouls. So covering Max Shortell's pass defense this week can probably be a breath of fresh air and a, a way to get some of their pride back for the defensive line. All right, thanks a lot, Molly. And make sure you pick up a, uh, a physical edition of tomorrow's Daily Iowan pregame where there's going to be a very cool oral history about the last two years between Iowa and Minnesota. That's all for us. Back to you guys. And, of course, Josh, we can't let our viewers go without letting them know what's at stake Saturday. That's right, Lauren. The Gophers and the Hawks will be playing with Floyd of Rosedale on the line. For those unfamiliar with the special swine, the origin of the Floyd of Rosedale began in 1935 when Minnesota Governor Floyd Olson bet Iowa Governor Clyde Hearing on the outcome of the game. At stake, a prize pig. Iowa went on to lose the game 13-6, but made good on the bet after Rosedale Farms of Fort Dodge, Iowa, donated the pig. Since then, the black and gold have played the Gophers 77 times for Floyd, with Minnesota leading the trophy series 41-34 and 2. The Hawks have lo lost the last two matchups, but are looking to reclaim the bronze pig this weekend. Well, that's all for us here at Pregame. Be sure, to, be sure to tune in this Sunday for highlights of the black and gold battle against the Gophers. Go Hawks and free Floyd. And only with Daily Iowan TV can you get a sneak peek at Friday's pages of the Daily Iowan. Read about this week's University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics Kid Captain for the homecoming football game. The decline of people accessing Facebook on desktop computers. And that's your latest edition of Daily Iowan TV. Be sure to check us out on Sunday at the same time or anytime online at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for watching and have a great night.